Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Brandon Bias from Shacheka.com and welcome to another Tutorial Tuesday. So, I'm going to be straight up with you guys. I completely forgot that today was Tutorial Tuesday and as such, I am sorely unprepared. I don't have any kind of Photoshop tutorial ideas at all for today. So, I'm just going to show you guys what I've been working on for the last three days straight which is why I forgot that today was Tutorial Tuesday. I've been spending the last like three days straight making normal maps for our future Minecraft texture pack. So I just figured I would give you guys a quick uh, sneak peek at the terrain file. And I'd also kind of show you what, uh, what I'm using to create normal maps now, which is a program called Crazy Bump. So just a sneak peek at the texture pack and a little short tutorial on Crazy Bump and how I've been using that to create normal maps for Minecraft. So without further ado, let's get into this uh, this bad boy here. So uh, this is the uh, terrain file for our future texture pack that we hope to be using. And no, I didn't create this. I've been... I don't know, I tried to make one myself, like uh, my own little kind of texture pack, but... I really did not know what the freak I was doing. So I just decided to take a couple different texture packs and kind of merge them together into one like super cool texture pack. Like I've got uh, uh, Sortex Fanver, I've got some LB Photorealism, Ovo's Rustic, and um, what else is in there? I think so. We've got some Vanilla HD, if I remember right, for like the, the armor and things of that sort. And so, yeah, anyway, we just just have a bunch of different texture packs all together and into one thing here. And it's, it's kind of cheap, but I think it looks cool. So a few guys and your opinions. <laughs> okay, so here are the normal maps that I've been working on for for days on end. And um, it's, it's kind of hard to give you guys an idea of what this looks like just by showing you the normal maps. So if you want like a video of me showing these off in game, then leave a comment in the comment section below, and I'll get I'll get into <laughs> uh, making a video for that uh, in the next couple of days or so. If you if that's really what you want, and so the reason these have been taking so long to do is I've been making each one like literally one by one, and that's because like I don't I, I want each particular texture to have a, a the perfect feeling to it and the perfect bevel. So I've just been going through these one by one and it's been taking forever to do, but I think the result's kind of cool. So again, if you want to see what these look like in game, leave a comment, let me know, all right? Okay, so let's just kind of show you guys what I do to create these um, these normal maps. So I'm gonna choose one of the textures that I haven't done yet. Um, let's see. Uh, so I've, I've actually got a lot of these done so far huh wow uh i guess what i could do let's how about we just do like the the side of the watermelon here that'd be that'd be kind of fun so let's uh make a selection around that particular block here and making sure that texture is selected i'll copy it to my clipboard with Control c you know one of those shortcuts that you should know by now since you're probably using a computer 24 7 and let's open up crazy bump and voila, there it is, Crazy Bump, Demo 1.2. And um, I actually just kind of downloaded this and started using it off of the official Crazy Bump website. Uh, there's a way to buy a license for it, but it's never asked me for one, so I've just been using it. <laughs> uh, so anyway, let's uh, click Open, and let's paste Photograph from Clipboard to make things all nice and simple here. And this first part is pretty straightforward. All you're doing is selecting the shape that looks more like what you want your overall effect to be in the end. So uh, this, this right hand side right here looks like it's being beveled outwards. So I'm gonna give that a click to select it. And here we go, we've got crazy bump open. So there's uh, obviously two parts to this. The left side is the preview of what the normal map file itself is going to look like as well as all of these sliders to change how that normal map is created and then on the right side we've got a little bit of a 3d preview of that texture and it's being wrapped around a ball right now but we're using this texture for uh for minecraft so we really don't want this in a ball we want this in a box so if you click this little word down here it says ball 
you see we've got a couple options. We can click box. So there we go. Now we've got this wrapped around a box just as if it was being used in Minecraft. And I'll be honest, this is actually looking pretty good right off the bat here. And uh, oh, by the way, um, I'm using uh, my the left click um, to, to click and drag this around. And then if you right click and drag, you can move the the source of light so that way you can get an idea of what it looks like when like the light goes across the sky and things of that sort. But right now, I'll just kind of keep it maybe right around here to get a feel of what this is going to look like. So let's start messing with some sliders here. So the first one, intensity, is obviously the overall intensity of the the bevel of the of the the, the normal map here. So if you increase that, it makes uh, everything beveled even more, makes the shadows more harsh, things of that sort. And then if you were to decrease it, obviously you'd become less uh, less deep and more shallow. And if you were to go into the negatives, that basically reverses the bevel. So in this case, it makes it into an indent rather than a bulge. And that sounds a little awkward, but that's how it is. And uh, so, yeah, that's, that's actually pretty handy because if you accidentally choose the wrong um, uh, thing at first, you know, I had those, those two different options. If you choose the wrong one, you can always reverse the intensity and hopefully get that original look that you wanted to get. And so let's just, um, let's not make this too deep. Let's, uh, make it somewhere around there, uh, for the time being, just, uh, as a starting point here. And, uh, sharpen will sharpen up all of the small details that are in the original texture or at, well, whatever it, it uses the texture to know where what parts to sharpen, but uh, in this case, it's not something that we want to apply because we want the we want this watermelon to be nice and smooth. So I'm not going to really worry about that. And something that works great, especially since we're on uh, these Minecraft textures, is noise removal. And if you've worked with Photoshop, you should know that noise is just the random like dots and pixels. So if you were to increase the noise removal here, it will smooth out the overall normal map here and thus make the, the bevel look a little more smooth and clean. So there's only three points on that. So it's, um, it's pretty drastic changes going through those, those different points. So I might leave it at like two for the time being here. And let's start getting into some of these other things. And the shape recognition, um, uh, I don't even know how to explain this. It, it basically looks at the texture and tries to figure out what shapes are inside of it. So uh, it looked at the uh, the shading from the, the dark to the highlight, and it recognized that as an overall round feeling to the texture. So it, if you were to get rid of that, it would basically kind of flatten out the up to uh, top to bottom feel. But uh, actually, that's, that's not too bad. It still kind of looks like it's getting that that overall watermelon bevel to it, but it was definitely a little bit, uh, oh, huh. I don't know. Uh, maybe it does look a little bit better without some of that shape recognition. Either way, um, you'll notice that if you're using Crazy Bump, you'll want to tweak the settings a lot to on, on every single slider, except for fine detail, uh, just to see like what happens to the overall look here. So. Uh, maybe I don't want all of the shape recognition. We'll just keep it uh, more towards halfway just to see how that looks. That's not too bad. So anyway, uh, the next sliders are the bevel on the individual points of detail. So we've got very fine detail, which would end up just increasing like the, the individual uh, rivets, I guess you could say, in the in this particular watermelon here. And let's, uh, oops, we don't want to miss the shape recognition. So put that back down. You can also put those into the negative, but um, I don't usually like doing that. In fact, I never really mess with fine detail too much. Or sorry, very fine detail. The fine detail I like to put up, and that will also put up some of the rivets. And then we're getting into some of the larger ones here. So the medium detail um, looks like that's uh, affecting some of the, the edges there. And then we got the large detail, which is a little bit more of the edges. And the very large detail is the overall roundness of this watermelon here. So uh, I would just suggest going through and messing with the individual sliders here just to see what they 
effect on your particular texture because it will vary depending on what texture you have going on here but you, you can kind of get the idea that uh, the amping up the very large detail will overall smooth out the texture that you're you're working on here and then as you work your way down to large detail medium detail and fine detail you'll just start getting uh it'll start getting more and more precise with the the bevel there so uh, so let's uh, let's just start messing with some of these settings and maybe see what we can get to. Um, so maybe I'll get rid of some of those shadows on the side there, and maybe I'll bring in some of that fine detail to bring in those rivets a little bit. And that's actually not too bad looking. But let's uh, let's increase the intensity just to see what we got going on. Maybe not too much, and that's actually looking. Not half bad. So let's go back to Photoshop and kind of look at the, the texture here just to kind of make sure that's corresponding fairly well. So it does have like these little edges going on here. And so I guess that means it's okay to, to see that correspond in the, the normal map here. And um, that's, that's actually looking, looking pretty decent here. So uh, I'm going to say that looks nice and good. So I'll click Save. And I'm gonna click Copy Normals to Clipboard. So that way I can just swap back to Photoshop and let's find out where I'm gonna put this texture. I have this all organized in a particular way. So let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I put that in folder nine. And then it's one of these further textures down here. So I'll make a new layer, paste that in. And there you go, we've got that texture officially pasted in there. So now to name this, so that was nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that'd be nine dash nine. Boom, oops, why is there still a six on the end? There we go. So there we go, texture nine dash nine is officially implemented into uh, my normal map set here. So if I wanted to test out how this would look, turn off the original texture, do a control alt shift s and save this as a png 24 file and let's save this as terrain underscore nh save that replace and as soon as that's done beautiful and now let's go to check it sortex here bring up the texture pack and just click and drag that in there hit okay there you go, now that updated terrain file is set up and ready to, to view in, in Minecraft. So uh, that's basically all there is that I do when it comes to creating the uh, the textures there. I mean, there are a few extra bits that, that I add in on my own. For example, I created some, uh, some transparency in some of the blocks to increase the, the bevel on it. So like I made a made some transparency here in the, the pumpkin, so that way there was a lot of uh, occlusion mapping applied, which is something that you guys uh, will just have to see in game. So again, if you guys wanna see what this looks like in game, let me know, I'll make a video for you. And um, yep, that's basically all I have for you guys today. I'm sorry that this wasn't like an actual, like full on Photoshop tutorial. Again, I've been really distracted with the whole normal map stuff and <laughs> And um, so yeah, just uh, leave some comments. Uh, let me know what you think of this uh, this process that I go through. And if there's a better way for me to go about doing that, uh, let me know because um, improvement's always great. And if you have any ideas for like future tutorials and things of that sort, please let me know, send me a message or go to our Facebook page, things of that sort. And uh, yep, once again, this is Brandon Bias from Chichicka.com. I'll see you guys next Tuesday.